Pequod beat an easterly course toward the whaling grounds off the Azores. Her crew came from all the isles of the sea, all the ends of the earth, from Greenland to Mombasa, from Clyde to Cocoboco. Flask, the third mate, bullied everybody bigger than himself, particularly whales, with whom he carried on a one-sided feud, as though the great leviathans had mortally insulted him and his forebears. And there was Pip, black little Pip, the cabin boy from Alabama. Second in command was Starbuck, whose Quaker stock had furnished many a whaleboat with its champion. No crusader after perils. His courage was one of the great staples of the ship, like beef or flour, there when required and not to be foolishly wasted. Ship carpenter, he fixed everything from stove bolt to broken arms and legs. Earth, the blacksmith, lived amidst thick, hovering flights of sparks. He breathed them in and out. They nested in his ears. But Perth cared not, because, as he said, he was scorched all over, and you cannot scorch a scar. Queequeg was our first Tarquinir. Next was Tashtego, the Indian from a great warrior race of red men, come to hunt whale instead of buffalo. Then Dagoo who got his boldness and majesty and grace from having killed a lion single-handed and partaken of its flesh. Stubb was second mate. Stubb, who'd have tied a bowlin in the devil's tail for a joke. Carefree, foolish, laughing, wise Stubb. Of our supreme lord and dictator, there was no sign. Ahab stayed silent.